All right, today's project is making a mask. And I started this admittedly in February and... February? February? Anyway, I started it a little while ago and I documented it just because I, I'm interested in showing the process and it's also a lot of fun. Uh, that, that's not me. That's 100% not me. Uh, <laughs> but in the brainstorming process, I was going through a bunch of ideas, realizing that it's been a while since I've done any painting of any kind, and I wanted to do something simple, but also achievable and not too inorganic. And in my hoop dreams, I thought that maybe I could do a deer. A full deer skull with antlers. That one did not win. But this is a little... This is starting to get a little closer to what I ended up settling on. In fact, this will turn into what I settled on. <laughs> and it's... I'm finding it's really hard to make... A mask with tiny horns that doesn't look like Daredevil. Just in general. So the front profile, good. Side profile, pretty alright. It's a good enough roadmap that I can figure out where I'm going to... What I'm going to do when I start putting clay down. Uh, there's literally no cheating when you are trying to make something symmetrical. Especially if it's a digital program, just copy and paste. I can't do that in, uh, I can't do that in real life. I can't make a mold, invert it, and then have a perfectly symmetrical copy of something. So, I'm gonna do it here when it's easy and I don't have to stress about it. That's definitely not me. There we go. So, realizing that I didn't have my computer or a way to record and look at that image, I roughly sketched it out. It's got all of the big ideas, and the master is being made out of uh, wed clay, W-E-D clay. It's smooth, it was made for movie productions, uh, it has, I want to say it has some kind of oil in it. Whatever it is, it dries out a little slower, it doesn't crack quite as severely, and it's just really nice to work with. And much like with painting, you start with your bigger shapes and you come in and add details later, but this first step is always putting down sort of a layer of clay to dictate the thickness, how much further away it comes from the face. And I am working off of a plaster cast of my face, so I know that this is going to fit me really well, but it's also going to look pretty honking big on... Uh, Anybody with a smaller dome than mine, which is fine. Uh, I'm not using anything anything too fancy. Regular wood tools, water, sponges. Uh, my favorite tool is the kidney tool, by far. Mostly because it's named kidney, which is also a bean. <laughs> That's... <laughs> anyway, so... Most of the bigger details are getting put in. These are the medium details, starting to get in some harder edges. The teeth, I decided not to go with the front fangs because that was going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, everything else just sort of came out organically. And I couldn't tell you how long it... Um, I couldn't tell you how long it took for me to sculpt it, but it couldn't have been more than maybe three or four days, a couple hours at a time. Maybe an hour at a time. I'm not positive. Point being is it didn't take too long, mostly because it was just fun. <laughs> Yeah, and I know it's subtle, but the time-lapse footage makes me seem like I'm going much faster than I am, and <laughs> uh, it it's interesting seeing it be being played back this fast, 
because at the time, at the time, like I didn't really see what every little detail was doing until maybe an hour later. I was like, oh, okay, it's coming together. But now at this point, I'm more interested in um, trying to keep it symmetrical and not completely lose my shit if it's not. Like, the forehead's not symmetrical, the eyes and cheeks aren't quite symmetrical. Uh, It would be more important if it didn't have sort of organic shapes, but if it, you know, just because it just because it's asymmetrical doesn't mean that it doesn't still have appeal. I really like it. <laughs> Not perfect, but I like it. The horns were an easy add. The clay's still kind of wet, and the drier it gets, the the more close the closer it becomes to adding harder cut details and adding um and just closing in on mold making time. That's where we're at so far. I make some executive decisions to add um, things that I never really planned on, but seem like that they fit pretty well with sort of the shapes of the mask in general. That lower jaw area is probably not going to be included. If when I when I actually clean up one of these to wear for some kind of I don't know costume cosplay whatever, uh, the bottom jaw area is going to be kind of cut off so you're not going to see all that gnarly shit yeah this was another round of fixing anything that's asymmetrical really digging in and pushing out big details uh, getting in all the hard lines that I could possibly get in uh, and I don't know how to describe it, like the little, not muscle lines, but the little corded areas in between the humps. <laughs> that is my favorite sentence I've said today. Uh, the corded the corded lines in between the humps to add some visual texture and just fun shit. There are no rules to this. I'm doing whatever the hell I want. It does have me thinking about what the next mask would be now. Because this is fun. I would I would happily do more of these. Every now and again we just need a little bit of brush. Yeah, and the finer that it gets, the um, like the lighter strokes and the the more careful that you have to start being because you can't you can't as easily put material back uh, as it as it was when it was first started. It's probably been two or three days, and this is the last this is the last step is carving away details for me. At least that's how I like to do it. And then one of the final steps too is trying to get rid of uh, any er any errant tool marks that don't fit in with the rest of what I've been going with. And that involves water, sponge, tapping, tap it, tapping. And just like that, it's ready for mold time. So I'm making a a, a little. Not a valley, not a bay, like a moat. Moat, that's the word. For the uh, for the silicone to the silicone that I'm gonna pour over it to rest in so that it makes a nice flange that I can make sure the uh, mother mold will attach to. It all it all makes sense in a little while. Basically just add a bunch of clay. You could do this on the wood, but nothing's really flush with itself, so you really can't do this on just the wood. 
uh, adding a retaining wall like you do. And once this was, once the silicone starts getting poured, all of that was done the same day. In this case, the same night. I realize now, too, that I really didn't need to make those extra registration marks. The silicone's never going to, it's not registering to anything down there. If anything, they need to go up, not in. My mess in this shot is a fucking mess. This is a two-part silicone. It's one of my favorites, uh, Platsil Gel 25. Surprising no one, nobody's paying me to say that. If anything, I'm not even paying me to say that. I'm spit anyway. The it's a one-to-one -one mix ratio. Uh, poured high just in case uh, it globs too much in one spot. And this is the print coat. And. I also didn't have anything to thicken it with, so I did multiples of these, which you will see. This code is important because you want to get it into all the details. You want it you want it to be on absolutely everything, so the next layers that go on top of it don't need to support details, they just need to reinforce what's already there. And typically if you had something to thicken silicone with, that would be the time to thicken it and then just sort of glob it on nice and even. This, while it worked, um, I feel like I kind of got lucky. Which I say a lot these days. Uh, it could have gone horribly, horribly wrong, and it did not. The silicone takes about an hour to cure. And so after after roughly an hour of this first pass, I put down another layer so that it would bond without being um without having sat too long. The next layer will bond much nicer if it doesn't have time to collect dust or oils or anything terrible. It's all nice and shiny. Not too bad. And so round one is done. Round two. And the particularly troubling areas could be the underside of those horns, the eyeballs taking up too much silicone, uh, making sure there's enough silicone on the nose so it has support. And basically any of the higher spots with with without a way to thicken it, you have to make sure that the silicone gets there while it's curing, or it's just going to be weak there. And it honestly kind of is. Uh, And this this product isn't a smooth on product. <gasps> Kitten, never mind. What I was saying was irre irrelevant. Hello, Selena. You gotta take a break to pet the kitten. Uh. <laughs> All right. So Selena was the comic relief or the uh, the mental break before this nightmare started. This is a different kind of two-part silicone, smelled vaguely of ammonia, or it has a, a smell. All the other silicones I work with don't. It's goopy, it's thick by default, it's meant for stuff like this. But I don't understand how the fuck you get it out of the package and mix it without going completely insane. But, okay, maybe you don't put it on parchment paper that literally can't be stuck to your table. But, I opted for the craziest version of this, which was mix it by hand with gloves on and slather it like peanut butter Peanut butter that doesn't want to come off uh, 
of fucking anything. I hated this with a passion. And after this, after this night, I went out and I got my, uh, I got my silicone thickener, and I never thought about this again because it was awful. However, it did work. It wasn't smart, but it worked. This could be an example of the wrong way faster. Because, the, the, like, even this stuff isn't, like, it's not super inexpensive. Like, it costs money, and I don't want to waste any of it. Uh, the last time that I used it, I had a better experience because I had mixed it on a nicer surface. But this was a genuine nightmare. And if I have to do, if, if I ever had to do it all again, I'll make sure I have all the right supplies the first time. So I don't have to do any improvising. Not pictured. I put on another layer of the um, thin silicone just as a last ditch effort to make sure that there was a, just enough thickness. Now we're making the mother mold. Plaster bandages, gently wet, and put over the top. Simple as that. This one is definitely not brain surgery. You can do it wrong. I have done it wrong before. I didn't do it super right this time, but it worked. That whole luck thing is really going to get... It's going to bite me in the ass at some point. But this is, bar none, the simplest part of the process. At least this time. I also happen to use literally all of my plaster bandages I had I had opened and prepared and I should have taken out another package hindsight's 2020 a lot of the times on the plus side the mold is done and now it's time for the dramatic reveal did you waste forty dollars worth of silicone? Possibly more. Did you waste like two weeks? That is always the stress of taking these things out. Mother mold came off. That's a good sign. Silicone's not stuck to nothing. Also a good sign. And now at this point I'm realizing how thin the silicone is, so I'm being extra, extra careful to not really fuck something up here. So far so good though. A little snag on the eyes, which is something that I'm going to have to deal with with um, the final product too. Once a uh, casting in arisen, but much to my uh, pleasant surprise, the horns didn't need to be cut out; they were good to go. And there it is. I'm like clean up, a little bit of uh, celebratory sleep. And it's time to cast. This first cast was just to clean out the mold. I used up the rest of um, some really old smooth-on stuff that I had. It just needed to be used. And as you can see, uh, if you're not careful with the part A, it'll bind when you uh, leave when you leave the uh, any part of it is around the lid. It'll just crust up, so you can't really do anything but strong arm it out. And the first slosh cast. It's exactly what it sounds like. You slosh it around until it stops moving. Uh, 
it's a particularly small amount, so I was getting pretty nervous that it didn't stop moving or start changing color to white like it uh, like it was supposed to. But on the pu on the plus side, it works exactly how it should work. There's only one part of the mold where silicone or not silicone where the resin wants to come out if you tip it too far. It's on that bottom side there. You can see a little bit of a spill. That's why gloves are important for this one. Uh, this stuff's not fun to have embedded in your fingerprints. I'm not going to kill you for a little bit, but you know, in general. And if just enough of it gets just enough of everywhere, you're golden. I believe I was rolling it around for about 15 minutes. This stuff's supposed to cure in about two. And if it's too cold, if there's not enough heat, if there's not enough of a mass of it, because it generates heat when it's curing, it will take its sweet, sweet time. In this case, more would be more. So whatever whatever I put in initially, it should be doubled. If less is more, then more has to be more. You know what I'm saying? Imagine how much more more is if less is more. It, all right. So you can see that it's slowing down even with the sped up footage. It's maybe two, two times speed, but it's just about ready to sit under a warm lamp and think about what it did. At 16 times speed, you can see it kicking. Fully kicked with the black um, uh, dye in it. It's still turned into a really light gray. And this layer with no dye in it, because apparently I don't want to see anything or make a good video <laughs> you can see that more of it more of it certainly gets uh, certainly gets to where it needs to go I don't want it to pull too much in the horns but just enough in the horns yeah that's cool <laughs> it's cool every time So made intentionally thin and to clean out uh, a lot of the clay bits from inside the mold. This was um, this was still pretty exciting, even though it was never meant. To, this this pulled was never meant to see the light of day. It will see the light of this video, but you can already see like clay embedded in it that wasn't going to come out of there without washing it pretty heavily with soap and water. And there's still a little bit stuck in there. And I do still have a, a little more garbage uh, material that I need to get through. Hit. <laughs> so, that is not how I'm going to remove the eye holes for the other masks. That's just what happened with this one. And you can see, it doesn't look quite right. Like, a Dremel tool is needed to, <laughs> to get it to go all the way. Oh, yep, it's time. There's no way to keep it. Can't be fired, because I don't have anywhere to fire it. So it's okay. It's time for the uh, clay to go, and it'll get reconstituted sometime and turned back into another mask. Thank you, Tiny Hammer. Now for the main event. After another subsequent cleaning, um, now it's time for bronze powder to be ceremoniously jostled around. There's a lot of jostling in this one, but it is very necessary. I'm 
the the bronze powder is very fine and it just it sticks wherever like it clings on to the silicone for one reason or another grip friction other stuff all I know is it serves my purposes very well you may or may not be able to see some glitter that got stuck into my powder that's because glitter, I touched glitter one time one time alright for the main event I'm using a clear two-part urethane resin coloring it with black and red so it has a nice background color to go against the the bronze if it ever gets chipped or cracked or something eats through the the bronze layer you'll see this dark color instead of something that's like stark stark white this one's also meant to cure clear so that is the ultimate color of that resin it's not going to change to white Mix thoroughly, mix carefully, pray to all your gods. This is, um, this is it. Or this is the first pour of the first time. It's almost it. And it's business as usual. Spread all that shit around the uh, the chocolate negative mask. I'm pretty sure I could make a version out of this out of chocolate that would look the exact same as that color right there. I would also not make one of these out of chocolate because I don't think this mold is food safe anymore, if it ever was. Yeah, this stuff was, this stuff took the right, the, it, it kicked pretty quick. This went relatively fast compared to those first couple tries. This is a slightly different formulation. Uh, Easy Flow 120 is meant for slosh castings like this, but it cures white, so I wanted to make sure that it had, I wanted to make sure that the first layer was genuinely dark just like the silicone and every other resin I've been using it's one to one by volume it is not one to one by weight I learned that the hard way a long time ago But you pour it around, pour it in, you slosh it around, pray to uh, Thor, and I think this is one of the last sloshings for this. I may have done one more after it, but it's really, really, really hard to see. All you see is, uh, is just that fucking tar going around. If you have a chance to color it with something that you can see in contrast to something else, it does make it a little easier to know where it's gone. This one does cure, it cures white, so I added enough black that the gray is a little darker. 
off camera I added one more layer. That's how I know it successfully it was successfully mixed. And it's time to pull out the final product. Nerve wracking every time. But it was very exciting to see that the bronze was covering everything. That felt really fucking good. One day I'll cut out the eye holes and maybe even the mouth hole and wear the damn thing, but... There's a few more steps to go through. It needs to be, um... It needs to be buffed with the finest steel wool that you can get, which is four zeros, quadruple odd, extra, extra fine. The finest thing you got, because anything more coarse will rip through the will rip through the the resin layer and the bronze layer, and you'll you'll bite through it way faster than you thought you would have. Hell, you can do it with the fine steel wool, but it takes a it takes a lot longer and more elbow grease. But this is the part of the process where you actually get to see that it's metal. And especially in person, this this is probably one of the most satisfying parts of this entire thing. Excuse me. And I make sure to get absolutely every possible inch that I can. Get the most mileage out of the bronze. Um, if you're going to do something neat, like... Make, make sure that at least it looks neat and it doesn't just seem neat, you know? That's a terrible sentence. But I really like the way that all the, all the little um, hatch marks and uh, texture came out on the chin and on the teeth. It worked out really well to bring out some more, like, textural contrast on the whole thing. It ain't perfect, but I like it. I especially like the eyebrows, because the high points really stand out, and the low points... The low points are appropriately low. One downside is the steel wool kind of disintegrates while you use it. It's not the right word, but like it's very, it, it's very flaky and it gets everywhere. And while I should have done it and shown it, you don't see me taking a lot of the uh, steel wool out of the eye holes and uh, just off the mask in general. But if you don't do that, it'll rust like on the mask over time and it'll make some very interesting patinas and since this is bronze it can will and in the right conditions patina on its own so if you wanted to do something like with copper powder like I like to do and then patina that with vinegar or whatever method you really want to try you can get some really interesting colors out of out of actual metal
Also, aside from bringing out the uh, major forms when when it's time to do a wash coat or um, yeah, a wash coat of like black paint, it'll it'll the high points will really really stick out, and the low points will actually be a pr like sunken in, and it'll it'll be neat. Yep, and there's his brother. The Copper Skull. He has also been buffed. But there is one more step. And that is to... That is to add a wash coat to this guy. Weathering coat? I think weathering is the word that I'm looking for. Jesus Christ, Adrian. I'll also have to clean up those edges because that is something that will dig into your face. Uh, this is just regular acrylic paint. It's what uh, it's what I had on hand. And it's just water. It's just a brush. There's nothing fancy about this. You can go overboard. You can go underboard. This is dealer's choice. You get to do whatever you want. You could not do it at all. Get it thin enough, and then get it absolutely everywhere. And if you don't want it absolutely everywhere, get it in the places that you want it. If you only want the horns to have this kind of texture or this kind of uh, treatment, just do the horns. We're going to put a lot on and we're going to take as much of it off as humanly possible. You don't want it to dry on there. You want it to be wet when you're wiping it off. Uh, I think oil paints are a decent alternative. Or no, not on the alternative is not the right word. Oil paint might be the um, preferred method of doing this because you can wipe it off for a lot longer. If the acrylic paint dries, you're going to have a fuck of a time getting that off of there. But what it does is it really sips into the cracks. Sips? Seeps? Really gets into those crannies. And you have... you All of your detail work gets accentuated in a way that is quite uh, quite nice. Not skipping a beat. I should not start on the chin. I should start literally at the top of the mask where I began, but hindsight being what it is, solid like 1918. Like I said, as much of it as you can get off, it will it will only benefit it. It 100% like it made it made a huge difference, and I am super happy that I ended up I decided to end up doing it. And I think I could I could have gone further. I could have added more layers of more different colors, um, like a really dark dark red brown, maybe even a blue if I wanted it to look a little more uh, aged. To mimic a patina even if I could make one. You can mimic one pretty easily with paint and I've seen some really good examples on uh, guys like Brick in the Yard. The dudes, he's chill as shit. And he's also very nice and doesn't swear. So after it's dried dried enough, I would decided to go back to the steel wool, and I was apparently I'm just gonna dig my thumb into detail. Anyway, uh, this was the right move. Steel wool round two was super worth it, and I I know I'm a broken record, but really makes that shit pop.
<laughs> You've already seen this, so now you get to see it as fast as humanly fucking possible. And just like that. That's basically it. Looking back at the footage, you can still see a lot of steel wool in the eye sockets. I have since cleaned that out. <laughs> yeah. It's got character. Certainly not perfect. And I certainly like it. Bronze is pretty. But yeah, thanks for watching. That is a great shot to end on. There you go. <laughs> no. The mask doesn't have a name. It's just a um, it's inspired by whatever the hell I was inspired by at the time. It's not Daredevil, I promise. But yeah. Anyway, everybody have a good one. Do stuff. Bye.